Welcome back to Project Hardway. If you watched my last video, I introduced you to my newest project, this 1994 Chevrolet S10. We took care of a couple of mechanical issues to make it runnable and drivable, and now this vehicle had a massive undetermined water leak on the inside getting into the floor. So in this video, we're gonna get into a lot of stuff. We're gonna pull all the interior out, we're gonna determine where that water leak's at, and we're gonna get into some seam sealer work on top of a little bit of welding on a crack in the floor, and we're gonna go over the worst cab vent that's ever been put in a vehicle. That way we can get this thing ready to put back together and get back on the road. Let's get into it. There's an issue that's been plaguing this truck now for the last couple of years. And if you watched the video where I was starting to get this truck ready to sell, I probably talked about it, and that is water, when it rains, getting into the floorboard. I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. To be honest, it could be coming from up in the windshield area. I got a kind of a sneaking suspicion, though, that it's coming from somewhere inside that door panel. Let me get you in closer and show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> You can see where water's been getting into the truck. That stained area in the floorboard. All that, that's actually wet right now. Ooh, look. Gross. One day I took this piece off to see what I could see, like a sailor going to see. And it's wet back here too. Which I imagine if it were soaking the water up, I feel like all this would be wet too, but it's not really. So I feel like water might be coming in in this area and getting in there. So there's some stuff in the truck. I'm going to get those things out. I'm going to take this seat out and then I'm going to try to remove this carpet. Two reasons why I'm removing the carpet. One, it's funky and it's going to rush my truck out. Two, I can't tell exactly where the water's coming from. Just it starts raining, then the floor's wet. I feel like maybe if I take the carpet out, I could possibly take a look in the truck while it's raining or some type of condition like that and possibly see the water running from wherever it's coming in at. So I'm gonna get on that right now. You know what they say, new year, new deductible. Ugh. All right, this is far worse than I originally anticipated. And I knew it as soon as I started to pull the carpet out of the back of the truck that we had a much bigger problem on our hands. The entire floorboard has got puddles of water in it. Back here in the back, passenger side floorboard. I mean, there's just water everywhere. That carpet is completely waterlogged. It's pretty gross. But, you know, it's a good thing that we went on ahead and did this because uh, now that carpet's not in there holding on to water like Rick Asley. And so hopefully it won't, you know, continue to destroy my truck. You can see a couple of spots where the paint's starting to bubble, where we're starting to get some rust. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to dry all this stuff up and then go in there and hit those spots of the wire wheel and hit it with some of that uh, rust converter spray. Spoiler alert, that stuff doesn't actually convert rust. It just kind of seals it and helps slow it down big time. But it's better than not doing anything about it. So I'll jump on that and show you when I'm done. So the rust reformer that I thought I had, well, it was rust dissolver, which is kind of like, you know, it's it's not a sealer type deal, but it did its job. It cleaned up any rust I had. I hit all the spots with some self etching primer. When that dries, finally, I'll hit that with some primer sealer. And then I might go over it with some epoxy black. 
by then it'll be a full on restoration. Uh, -uh nope. Just uh, slightly better than it was, um, but enough to get us where we need to be. Once that dries, the only thing left to do, loosely put the driver's seat in it, maybe, and then wait for a rainy day. As far as this carpet is concerned, I'm not gonna give up on it just yet. Never gonna give you up. It's still fully intact, and I think with a little bit of love, I can bring it around. I don't wanna spend a bunch of money on this truck because it's gonna take away from other projects we've got in the shop. In the meantime, let's see what kind of cashback rebate the dealer was offering the day I bought this truck. Well, that's a dollar forty five fifty one and a vacuum token from the car wash. That might just be enough to keep my wife happy. Nope, nope. I've got too many cars. It's one of those rainy days or nights, early morning, however you may want to put it. So let's roll this thing out into the driveway, see if we can find that water leak. The idea here is that if I camp out inside of it long enough while sitting out in the rain, eventually I'm going to start to see water coming in. Then we can try to trace it back to wherever it's coming from. One of the cool things about these trucks from the 90s they got these little jump seats in them. Uh, oh boy, those things are not safe by any means. Well, I'm glad I decided to hang out in these jump seats because looking back behind them, I'm getting water back there. A little bit of moisture back there, a little bit of puddling there. Doesn't look like it's coming down from the side windows, which means it may be coming from back glass. Got a little bit right there. A little bit of moisture back there along the edge of the seam. Still not seeing anything in the front floorboard, which is where the majority of the water was in the carpet, at least before I took it out and discovered all the other issues it had, how everything was soaking wet. Not seeing anything up there yet. We'll just hang out a little longer. So the truck's been sitting outside in some light rain for a few hours and back is got puddles in it coming from somewhere back there probably a back glass issue but um i'm not for sure which means i'm gonna have to take all of this stuff out do this again see exactly where that water's coming from surprisingly enough there's no water in the driver floorboard which is the place that i thought i had the water leak at in the first place i wasn't anticipating that well now that we've got all the metal back here exposed um it's a sunny day outside not a rainy day and my water hose is frozen but we're ready when the time is right so next got the truck outside everything inside is dry I'm gonna have a quick go of this with the garden hose real quick so we can uh see on the inside after a few minutes First time I did this, the most water I saw was coming in back here in this corner. So I'm gonna concentrate here, but still respectively check the other areas as well. Uh-oh, better get in here. So the water appears to be coming down this seam right here. A little hard to tell, but it's running down from up there. And it's doing the same thing on that seam over there. I don't want to jump to the conclusion of the back glass because it, you know, it doesn't feel loose. It doesn't push out. I got one other idea. This little guy right here. These things are notorious for being junk. This one's got cracks in it. The heat from the brake light warps and melts the plastic over time and they fall apart. Junk. Good luck finding a good one in a junkyard. They don't exist because they all do this. We'll take this one off and see if it's wet inside. Don't go nowhere. All right. So there is a little bit of water inside here. But it doesn't look like that could be the exact source of it. Oh, it's kind of dark in here, but 
pulling the dome light revealed that that is uh, bolted on back there in the back. However, it's not wet up there. Nothing looks wet at least. So uh, I'm gonna put that lens cap back on and then I'm gonna take the water and I'm just gonna concentrate closely on the back glass and see if I can keep just a steady stream in this area, see if that water keeps coming in even more. Yep. Show sure enough, it's all the way down here, puddling up in the floor under that jump seat. Got a little bit coming in here in the middle and back off in the corner there. That glass is coming out. So I was just about to jump in there and go to town with the razor knife. Just cut this old girl out, get it out of there. But then I was doing what you do when you've got a car and you're not really doing anything, you look at it. And I noticed something. Let me get you in here and show you what I'm seeing down here at the corners. So this right here is a factory seam. And from the factory, they fill that with seam sealer. Now, if you look real close, you'll see it's got some gnarly cracks in it. And it's the same way on the other side. So, before I go digging into anything else, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to fill that up with some RTV silicone, let it cure, and then check it for a water leak. But before I do that, what I've done, got a funnel and a cup of water, I laid it to it right there so I could be precise with it. And sure enough, fresh water in the cab just from the funnel. So clean that up, put some RTV on it, let that cure, and then water leak check it again. So I've got the silicone drying on the tops of the seams on the back of the cab right now. I've gone ahead and I've pulled out the jump seats to get those out of the way. Now I'm gonna go after something that I didn't wanna do quite yet, but I'm already in a position and I'm here to get it done. Might as well I'll pull out the oh crap handle and the sun visors and this headliner is about ready to come out. And I'll get it ready to be recovered and we'll do that in another video. So I went after the whole back glass, just fanned over the whole back of the truck there. Now I do have some water in the cab, but it's coming from the middle here. Nothing on the corners over there. The back of the cab has got this vent. I can help but wonder if that's letting some water in too. Confirmed, got a new toolbox. Got it for the use of one of my friend's stepfather and it's taking up room in his shop and he doesn't use it or need it discount, 50 bucks. Anyway, we're gonna replace the same cylinder here on the back of this cab. I'm gonna have to make some room for that. So we're gonna have to slide this bed back. I don't wanna take the bed all the way off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself just some room to work with. These early second gen SNs came with this bumper which I don't mind. It looks a little different. It's not just a block hanging off the back of the truck. However, it's got these little plastic pieces on the side. I'm gonna have to take those off before I can get it back. So we'll get those off. I'll have to take loose the filler neck here on the side of the cab. And then there are eight bolts on the bottom of the truck that hold the bed to the frame that I've already hit with some PB blaster. And we'll try to crank those off, hopefully without breaking them. Now we're gonna slide this thing back because remember, I don't need to take the whole bed off. I just need some room to work in here. Got some stuff down there I can't quite get to. An area that I'd like to have a little bit more space, make sure I get it right. I have no idea how I'm gonna make this happen. Well, well that's no longer the way it was. Oh, all right. Filler next loose. I think I'm just gonna go side to side and walk it Walk it. Because the hard part is going to be getting it up over the edge of this bumper.
Yeah. Ugh. And now it's that way. So if I lift up on the front here. Ugh. See if we can get it back towards you. Oh, something's happening. Ah, I've run into the tire with this wheel opening here. Ugh. Well, that presents a problem, doesn't it? I can get my arm in there. That might be just all she needs. Now I've started taping up some of the area around here to try and preserve some of these spots that I don't want to mess up. I mean, you can go as deep as you want to whenever you start digging on stuff, but the further you go, the more you got to go back and fix. So I'm going to try to minimize it. Before I start digging into this though, and getting in here and doing things, I'm going to reach in here, ow. Ooh, all right, busted my fingernail open there on the edge of that cab vent. We'll get there and I'm gonna pop that thing out of there. I'm not sure how it goes on. Yep, so that's the thing that I'm after there. Brief, when I reached in here and busted my fingernail open, it was uh, right there, just got right into the edge of that. Anyway, I'm not sure if that's glued on or if it clips on, but I'm about to try to pop it out with this flat scraper. That seems to be doing something. I just don't know if it's the right thing. Hmm. I definitely don't want to break this because I don't know if I can get another one. And before you ask, no, you can't get to it from inside the cab. There's a, another layer of cab on the inside. All right, sit rep. It would appear as though there are some clips on this thing holding it in. So I've got these finessing sticks wedged in there, pulling it up the edges. And if I can hit those clips, maybe, if that's what it is, I can pop them out of there. that one that appear to be all the sticks I have oh hmm. something's happening maybe maybe not I could put that in there a little further what keeps this together well things have escalated quickly here um couldn't really find any information on how that goes in how to take it out anything like that so I just kept prying on it and prying on it and pop yeah so let me get that thing out of there. All right, so what it looks like we're working with here is this little cage that goes inside the truck. That away, and then it clips and claps all together with this, and it's got these little rubber flappers in there. The idea, I guess, would be that air can't come in, but when you shut the doors, air can go out. Now looking at this thing, I heard some snapping and popping and things like that when it came out. Came out when it blew out. But I don't think it did any significant damage. So what I think I may be able to do is get away with putting some type of new seal on here. Maybe glue the edges of this back on. Clip it together and then pop it back in there. Because these are the clips that I thought I was hitting or trying to hit when I was trying to pop it out of there nice and clean. But overall, I don't think I really destroyed it. Should be able to put it back in there, no problem. Hopefully that water leak will be gone. Now for this. Now to get into the root of the work here, I started to remove some of this RTV that I'd put on there to test the area to make sure that's where it was leaking at. And when I did, it was pulling some of the old seam sealer up with it, as you can see here. So I put a few layers of blue painters tape here, again, just trying to minimize the finishing efforts once I get done with this. I've got this on this, and I'm about to go to town, baby. I'm gonna start off slow, see what kind of damage this wire wheel does when I start sticking it in there. I don't wanna mess up the window. <laughs> gonna need a little more oomph than that. I should probably be wearing a mask. Oh, the tape's not doing anything. Well, that's what I did. May not be easy to tell, but I went right into the paint that I had taped off there. That's okay. Uh, I think as long as I stay 
in this valley here that I think the seam sealer down this way is good. The cracks were up here. So I'm gonna try to clean all that up best I can. I might have to get a smaller tool to get in here, get all that cleaned up, and then we will squirt some stuff in there. Got my Dremel here with the wrong bit on it, but if it works, it'll be the right bit. I'm gonna get the top side, this ledge that the window sits on the top side of it. You just can't get in there with the wire wheel. doing something now mind you this bit is made for grinding away metal try not to put a hole in the truck but it did something close your eyes ah. sure still a little bit of sealer in there I'm gonna dig at it a little bit with this small flat tip screwdriver hey that's actually working quite well. Get that off there. It's not perfect, but it's going to be better than it was. Close your eyes. Ah. Hmm. Now I'm gonna clean all that up real good with some acetone, try to get as much debris off of it as I possibly can, along with any leftover silicon below it. And then we'll get into messing with the seam sealer itself. So I've got this thing about as good as I think I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get in here with this seam sealer try to push it off in that corner then run the bead down that open gap then pinch it off where I want it to stop now get a little soapy water or something that way it doesn't pull with your finger too much and I'm just going to try to spread it out oh it's pulling a little bit and push it under that crack. And then I'll run it down just a little bit. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be perfect. If I have more experience, it might be. But it should keep the water out. Now, before I ran that bead, I put a couple extra pieces of tape on the area. That way, it would create a channel. When I remove the tape... Seam sealer's got an edge on it, only in the places that I need it to be. And there we go. Smooth that part out just a little bit. All right, now I'll go do the same thing to the other side while that dries. So after I turned the camera off when I finished this side and I was about to get ready to go over there and do that side, my brain said, hey dummy. And it sounded suspiciously like my dad when it did. So try this. And so I busted out the heat gun Hit that on it, make it a little bit harder, tackier, a little quicker. Went around the other side, did the same thing I did over here, over there. Now I've got both sides done. I'm gonna let that set and cure for a little while. I just ordered some butyl tape that I'm gonna use to put that vent on the back of the cab. Then we can slap all that stuff back together and I can do a quick touch up paint job on these spots and hopefully the water leak is now fixed. All right, so for starters on this vent, I'm gonna try to give this thing a fighting chance of staying in place when I put it all together. It's got all of these little tabs that stick up that kind of hold this in position. A lot of those are broken off and they don't take much to break more of them off. They're pretty brittle after 30 years of existence. So I'm gonna put my favorite silicone on there, the gray one, and just put a light little coat around there and then squish it in place. Now, after having a moment to set, I'm going to try to carefully set this in place. Believe it or not, I actually did wipe the surface of this with some acetone. There we go. It's mostly in place. Let me get that little guy there. Snip this back on there. It should sandwich it all together. Those little studs that stick up go into all these little holes here. Now I just got to wait for Amazon to deliver my butyl tape and we can slap that back in the truck. This seam sealer's had some time to cure. They say that you can paint this stuff right away after putting it on, but if you're going to let it set, give it some time, you know, like 12 hours or so. That being said, if it cures and uh, then you're going to go back and paint over it, you want to scuff it up just a little bit. Just let it know you were there. Not too hard. Then you 
blow all the dust off of it, clean the area up with your favorite surface prepper, and now we're ready to put a little bit of primer on it. Now this truck, I don't have, they don't have an aerosol this color, so I've got a touch up paint pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it and then I'm gonna let that cure so I can go back and brush the touch up paint on in this area. You can get this color in aerosol, but it has to be custom made. You gotta order it, they gotta make it, it's expensive, it takes time to get here. So we'll go with the touch up paint pen that I got off of Amazon. All right, so this primer's had time to dry. Now I've got this touch up paint pen from AC Delco, the bright teal WA9794 paint coat. Again, can't get it in a spray unless you order it from a specialty store online or from your local paint supply store. So we're just gonna shake this like a Polaroid picture, brush it on there. The only caveat, it will take longer to dry than a spray will. But I'll put a coat on, let it dry, come back, put a coat on, let it dry. Make it look good once it looks halfway decent, clear coat it. It's like a big thing of fingernail polish. Oh my God, this is gonna take forever. Dude, this was not meant for this. It's gonna look like hot garbage. It's okay to use the wrong tool for the job. If it works, it's now the right tool. Get me some light. I can't see. God, did I really go that far down with the primer? After some time for my automotive fingernail polish to cure, couple of quick shots of some clear coat and that is now ready to go. Next, I've got this butyl tape that I ordered from Amazon. A little stuck to the packaging, but that's okay. Look at that. <laughs> Found something. Let's just start there. All right, so this stuff might be a little thick for what I want to do. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit. When I stretch it, it gets thinner. Essentially, I'm just gonna find a good start point. I'll probably start at the bottom in the middle. So if there is any kind of a gap, it'll be at the bottom in the middle and uh, just work my way around this and get that tape secure on there or to my countertop. So you can see I worked it around the outside of the vent, got it butted up there in the middle started out thin and then as i was going around i figured i'd make it just a little bit thicker there's a channel on this vent so i let it squish down in there real good hopefully that gives me a tight enough seal against the back of the cab that this thing doesn't leak water now all i gotta do is go over to the truck pop it in cab vents back in place i may have left that just a little too thick ended up taking it back off squishing it down a little bit more Ultimately, I had to break out the heat gun a little bit to make it compliant so that it would snap into place. So that's there. The uh, clear coat here has had time to cure. The only thing left to do is get the bed back in place and then roll it out there and check it for water leaks. Let's see. That's good. Now I'm not gonna bolt that down just yet, just in case we're not done here. That'll just make it where I can roll it out of the garage. And if everything checks out, bring it back in, bolt the bed back on, and then we start putting the interior back in. Now that I see the truck like this, without those end caps on the bumper, kind of torn. Don't know if I want to leave that bumper on there or if I want to put a roll pan on it. I don't know, we'll see. If you got an opinion about it, put it in the comments. All right, let's see what we got. Looks pretty dry. I don't see anything. Nothing. Nothing fantastic. I sat there and I soaked it for a good little bit in those three spots where I knew I was getting water in before with the leaks. As soon as the water would hit it, I'd start getting water on the inside of the truck. Now we're dry. I think we're in good shape. So now we can go ahead and start getting ready to put the interior back in after I bolt the bed back down. But Wait. <laughs> Great. So right here, this thing's got a crack in the floor around the bolt where the seat goes on. And that's just from years of wear and tear and just in and out, in and out. You know, it causes stress crack. 
So what I've done is I've gone underneath the truck and pried up on this area a little bit, get it closer back to the way it should be. Cleaned off the metal around it. I've put a couple of holes in here, one here and one here to hopefully stop the crack from spreading, which I don't know if that matters or not after you weld it up. But I know that with a crack in metal, if you drill a hole at the end of it, it usually keeps it from going any further. So better safe than sorry. Now, I'm not a professional welder. I have one, but I'm not a professional. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to start spot welding one here. Then I'll start in the middle and keep working my way down back and forth. One, 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 one. That way I can keep the heat even and keep it from getting too hot and flexing in one area. Do a real quick dirty tack job on that and grind it all down flat. Hopefully that crack's taken care of and we're ready to put the carpet back in after I clean it. Got my welder all set up, ready to go. I'm using a 025 wire. That means that that wire is 25 thousandths of an inch thick. It's a mild steel wire. I'm running a 7525 gas. That's 75% argon gas, 25% CO2. I've got it set up just to kind of tack these little bad boys in place. And I currently don't know where my welding glove is. So here we go. Also need to disconnect the battery, you know, electrical things. At this point, it'll be good practice to stop. Make sure yourself and your shop aren't on fire. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Coming up for that truck, we've got a lot more work to do. We gotta do something about that funky old carpet that's in there, get all the interior back together. We're even gonna recover the headliner. Gonna do a whole video on that. And I've got a lot more in store for that truck. So stay tuned, please like and subscribe. And remember, sometimes you gotta do things the hard way.